heart went Welcome to a new lesson on basic electrical engineering. In this particular chapter, we'll deal with different methods we use to analyze electrical networks. So for the first method, we have Kirchhoff's Law. And for this presentation, we'll be learning who is Gustav Robert Kirchhoff, what is Kirchhoff's Law, what are the KVL and KCL, what do they mean, and what are the different sample networks we can use to help understand Kirchhoff's Laws. So, for the introduction, Gustav Robert Kirchhoff on the right, from 1824 to 1887, is a German physicist who first introduced Kirchhoff's law in 1845, of which this law became central to electrical engineering. So, he extended the theory of George Simon Ohm and generalized the equations that describe current flow in electrical conductors in three dimensions as per the editors of Encyclopedia Britannica this 2020. So actually, yung formulas that you learn under Kirchhoff may be derived in other in other methods that we'll be using like Maxwell, pero in full honesty, si Kirchhoff ang unang nag-publish ng kanyang work when it comes to network analysis with Kirchhoff's law. So what are these laws? What is Kirchhoff's law? This is a pair of laws stating general restrictions on the current and voltage in an electrical circuit. So, you have Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, and Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, which is very, very uh, much used in electrical engineering kahit pa higher electrical na nagagamit pa din si Kirchhoff's. So, let's discuss each of them. First is the Kirchhoff's current law. So, Kirchhoff's current law states that the algebraic sum of currents entering a node or a closed boundary is equivalent to zero. Yun daw pumapasok, yung algebraic sum. Algebraic, ibig sabihin, it's a scalar value. We simply add them arithmetically. So, pag pinagsama-sama daw natin lahat ng kuryente na pumapasok sa isang node, dapat daw mag-equate yun sa Zero. Why? Because this is based on the law of conservation of charge. Di ba maalala nyo? Every matter is composed of atoms. Every atom has different parts which we call um, particles in, represented by charges. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga charges nandoon na. And once we're able to um, apply force to a circuit, especially sa mga conductors natin with with an existing amount of charge, tatakbo itong mga charges na to, they will form, they will be considered current na, yung abrupt flow of charges natin is considered current, at alam natin na if this particular force is not applied to the circuit, wala namang iibo, di ba? Parang, it's there. It's just not moving. But once an energy is applied, it will move. But once an energy is cut off, it stops. But it does not go to waste. Hindi siya nawawala. Nandun pa din siya. Yung charges hindi nawawala. It's not destroyed. Okay? So, yun yung tinasabi natin na law of conservation of charge. That's why, sinabi dito na, sa madalit sabi, kung pagsasamasamahin natin lahat ng charges na pumapasok, charges na now in the form of current, dun sa node, dapat ang summation nila ay zero. And by this law, paano magiging zero yon? Because the currents that enter the node, yung mga pumapasok na kuryente papunta dun sa node, we consider them positive currents. And the currents that leave the node, yung mga kuryente naman na lumalabas galing dun sa node, they are considered negative. So parang ang nangyari, kung ano yung pumasok dun sa node, yun din dapat yung lalabas. So, there's no, there's no loss, kumbaga, walang nawawala. And that's because of your law of conservation of charge. So, if you're going to notice this diagram on the left, you have a common node here. Nagmukha na siyang star, di ba? You have a common node here, and this node has five branches. Limang linya ang nakakonek sa kanya. Itong limang ito. And on these five lines, there are assumptions of directions of current. You have their I1, na pababa, based on the... Based sa itsura ng linya, kaya yung naging pababa, ha? Kasi vertical yung conductor mo. Alam ka namang humiga yung kuryente. Okay? 
Siyempre, it will follow the path of the conductor. So, kung vertical yung conductor mo, ang assumption dito, yung current na dumadaan dun, which is named as I sub 1, pababa siya. Yung current mo na horizontal sa kanan, yung, ang assumption dun sa kuryente yung dumadaan sa kanya is I2, and I2 is pa kanan daw. And then, you have there I3, you have I4 here, and then you have I5. And if you're going to notice the directions, I1, I5, and I4 all have the tendencies of entering the node because of the direction of the arrow. Parang may notion na papasok sila dun sa node, ba? So, itong mga nodes, ah, itong mga currents na to na papasok dun sa node, they will attain or obtain a positive sign. And the ones that will leave the node, like I2 and I3, di ba? Ang itsura nila palayo sila sa node. Ibig sabihin, may pumasok. At yung pumasok from tatlong branches, lumabas ulit. Kaso, yung lumabas, kumbaga parang nagsama-sama sila dun sa node na yun, paglabas, dalawa na lang yung labasan nila. And that is, yung branch ni I2 at yung branch ni I3. So, whatever is the algebraic sum of those who entered the node should be equivalent to the algebraic sum of those who left the node or umalis sa node. Kaya pag pinagsama mo yan, that should be zero. Kung anong pumasok, dapat equal sa kung anong lumabas. Next, what is Kirchhoff's voltage law? Kirchhoff's voltage law naman is based on the principle of conservation of energy. And that is, no energy is created nor destroyed. Ganun lang din, kaparehas ni um, law of conservation of charge, di ba? So, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all voltages naman. Pag sinabi natin Kirchhoff's current law, sum ng current. Pero pag sinabi natin Kirchhoff's voltage law, sum naman ng voltage. Ibig sabihin, voltage naman yung ating pag um, tutuunan ng pansin. So, yung algebraic sum daw ng lahat ng voltage around a closed path or closed loop should be equivalent to Zero. So, the sign on each voltage is the polarity of the terminal encountered last as we travel around the loop. Okay, ganito po yan. Para madaling maintindihan. If you're going to look at the circuit, simple loop circuit that we have on the left, meron ka dito one loop circuit, at itong one loop circuit mo has three components. You have an active component here, a voltage source, and two passive components, resistances. Okay? Itong tatlong ito, na components na ito, they have voltages. Okay? The voltage source has a voltage supply, and the passive components have voltage drops. Okay? So, since meron silang voltages, ang idea dito is, kung ano dapat yung kayang isupply, dun sa conservation of energy natin ha, kung ano dapat kayang isupply ng VT natin or ng supply voltage natin, kung kaya niyang mag-supply ng 10 volts, ibig sabihin dapat yung 10 volts na yon i-accommodate ng ating passive components or i-receive. So, whatever is given, that should be received by the passive components. Okay? Ngayon, ang gagawin natin dito, you're going to take the sum of these three voltages and thus you have Vt, V1 for the voltage drop across R1 and V2 for the voltage drop ako, across R2. Kaso ang tanong, ano yung magiging sign? Okay? Ganito po ang idea. Every time we have a closed loop, we are going to trace that using a clockwise motion. And with that being said, ibig sabihin, trace mo yung path ng ating closed loop in a clockwise manner. So, ibig sabihin, papaganito. Ngayon, kapag dumaan ka dun sa mga voltages na meron tayo, pumasok, di ba, pagpunta mo dito sa voltage supply, pagdaan mo dito sa voltage supply, pagpasok mo sa negative sign, I mean, ang unang mong ma-encounter ay negative sign. Ang last mong ma-encounter sa voltage supply ay positive sign. Kaya sa nabi dito, the polarity of the terminal encountered last. Yung polarity ng terminal na huli mong na-encounter for that source. So, ang huli kong na-encounter dito ay positive sign, kaya ang sign ni VT ay positive. Pero pagdating mo dito, pagdating mo dito sa ating passive components, ganito po ang magiging assumption, hindi lahat ng passive components ay may nakalaan na sign for the voltmeter. Ito kasing positive negative V1 na to, this is an indication of a voltmeter tap to the passive component. Okay? So, kung wala iyan, kung wala ito, paano natin malalaman yung magiging sign ng ating voltage drop? Depende sa direction ng kuryente na dumadaan sa linyang yon. So, as, as you can see, you have here an existing arrow 
this arrow is clockwise. So, ibig sabihin, ina-assume ng, ng circuit sa diagram na yung kuryente yung dumadaan sa kanya ay clockwise din. Kasabay kung paano natin tinetrace. Ang kuryente ay clockwise. Tinetrace natin yung yung path, clockwise din. Ngayon, kapag dumaan ka sa passive component or sa resistor, in the same direction that the current flows through the resistor, pag sabay kayo ng kuryente, negative ang magiging sign ng voltage drop. So, since I'm I'm tracing this to the right, base sa branch na to, to the right ako, di, eh, di ba, clockwise ang kuryente, pag ganito siya. So, ibig sabihin, pag daan ko dito, pakanan ako, pakanan din yung kuryente, negative ang voltage drop mo, kasi parehas kayo ng direction. Pero, pag nag, pero pag nag-trace ka ng loops, tapos, na kasalubong mo ang kuryente yung dumadaan sa branch, dun magiging positive ang sign ng voltage. So, for this particular example, you will have positive VT kasi lumabas tayo sa VT, negative si V1, kasi kasabay natin ang kuryente, and negative din si V2. Kasi pagdating natin sa branch na to, bababa tayo, same with the current, ang behavior ng kuryente dito is pababa din, so sabay tayo dun sa kuryente, so pares tayong pababa, kaya naman, negative ang sign ni V2. Thus, VT plus negative V1 plus negative V2, that would be equivalent to zero. And for voltage drops, papaltan mo lang siya ng I times R as in your Ohm's law. So if I is equivalent to V over R, pwede nating solve si voltage doon, that would be IR. So for V1, V1 would be I1, R1. So kunin mo, magkano ba yung kuryente dumaan dito? That's I1. Multiply that by the resistance. That R, that's R1. For V2, that's I2, R2. And then simply equate to zero. And that is your Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, there is a force more powerful than steam and electricity. Steam is for M is electricity for EE. And that is will. Okay, so as long as you are determined on pursuing your profession, no amount of stress, no amount of struggle will hinder you from achieving your dreams. So, kapit lang tayo mga engineers ha.